Yeah, uh, my name is Pearl Chen. I am the head of content marketing at Shutterstock. Um, we are basically expanding our program. Um, historically, we've been a blog and only a blog, essentially, but we right now are uh, reimagining what content marketing can be, uh, yeah. it really expanding what it means in the organization, uh, diversifying the types of content we do, and making sure that it is driving some key goals like traffic, um, engagement, and ultimately business results. Yeah, I mean, I started originally in editorial publishing. Sure. So my first few years out of school was really about editing and writing for um, digital properties and print properties. So I was at Time Inc. Um, and I was working specifically mostly for People Magazine. So I was sure. um, basically an editorial for a long time and I went to grad school. So when I went to grad school at Columbia, um, it was a master's program in strategic communications. And so it did include people uh, like myself who are more of a journalism background, um, but also a lot of marketers, a lot of PR, a lot of people who work across this kind of discipline of communications in general. So that program really opened my eyes into the types of work I could be doing using the skills I already had and then enhancing that on top of uh, what the editorial skills were with marketing knowledge. And so I realized it was kind of a light bulb moment for me that you really can still use the skills that you had before mm -hmm. uh, and really kind of reinvent yourself a bit and, and apply it to different discipline as well, as long as you're um, getting the experience as well as the, I guess, the, the expertise of your peers uh, and to, to try to reinvent a bit about your career. So that's essentially what happened. I, I basically started to work very closely with content marketing organizations in general. So it was at first a nonprofit, in finance and then went into a late stage startup for video tech. And then more recently, the last few years, uh, working for bigger corporations like IBM and mm -hmm. Bloomberg, um, all in content capacities. So working on branded content or uh, pushing certain products for our, our launches. Um, and I just really enjoyed it because it was kind of marrying my passions for creativity and writing with larger business goals. And I, I, it was very gratifying for me to realize like not only are th people reading my stuff, but people might be buying or taking actions because of my content. So that was extremely gratifying. And I realized content these days is such a big part of most organizations that um, if I can really help in that effort, it, it feels like I'm in, in this place I should be, which is um, helping, helping businesses while being creative, while creating something that helps other people as well. I think it's it's a relatively still new field. Sure. So I think a lot of times you kind of have to go in with the perspective and with the uh, expectation of needing to educate it and evangelize it in an organization uh, because a lot of people will think of content a certain way and yeah. maybe only a certain way. And so if you as a new content marketer uh, have a breadth of experience or at least like ideas of making different things. I think that's super important to like make that known. Many, many places might just think, okay, you do a blog or yeah. maybe you make videos uh, or maybe you just make eBooks. And in my view, it's better as a content marketer to have all of that in your tool belt. You really have to be able to adapt quickly to different business needs and make sure that your content is speaking to that particular need or that particular point in the buyer journey, uh, particular personas that you're reaching out. So having that flexibility and that breadth of experience would be very important, I think, for a content marketer. I mean, I'm going to give you the answer you don't want to hear, which is both. But for the purposes of our conversation, I think I'll go back to something that I learned at IBM, which yeah. is uh, make less matter more. Sure. So there is a tendency in many organizations to want to scale content and you're making a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that because obviously for things like traffic, you just need that volume. Yeah. Um, but as I've gone through my career in, in content, it's like at, so, at some point you want to think about like your resourcing, you're also your ideas. Like what is it that about a certain piece of content that can grow legs beyond what you're making? And so in that sense, like you kind of want to, make sure the, the original thing is of great quality. 
uh, because you do want to make derivative assets. You do want to scale. So the, the volume, the qu quantity does become very important. But what is that quantity coming from? Is it from, coming from a place of something that can be adapted? Uh, and that means the quality <laughs> truly has to really be there up front. So I would say I don't want to, again, say one or the other, but I do think that one probably comes from the other. Like sure. to be able to scale does mean you have a core asset of some sort that is able to be scaled and uh, derived from. So I usually put a lot of thought into the quality as well when I'm looking at new content. Buy-in, mm -hmm. I want to say like buy-in across the organization. Yeah. So I think it's, it's not just about making the thing and making it very creative and high quality, but understanding the stakeholders and the people who will use that content or will promote that content or um, like you help make that content a big piece of their overall strategy slash business sell cycles, whatever that may be. Um, because then, then your content matters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, beyond your team or beyond what you think it should be. Um, when you have the stakeholder buy-in, then you can evangelize further and say, this is why we matter. This is what this purpose is, this piece of content is serving for the organization as a whole. Um, and then I would also say because of that buy-in, sometimes the cross-functional collaboration is even better. Yeah. Uh, because of the connections that you may have, like maybe let's say you're, for example, um, sourcing talent for a webinar or a podcast. Sure. Um, you may not have the visibility to the different types of people who can speak, but when you have the buy-in and the cross-functional collaboration, you'll probably find that the right person with the right ideation and con concept along with it. So um, I think that's what makes content super uh, relevant for an organization. Um, when, you're are, when you are operating in silos sometimes, um, your success is measured by basically your your own team within the confines of your own team. But when you cr cross functionally collaborate, I think your success metrics actually can really uh, uh, scale as well.